think everybody understands, both from a free market perspective and from government helping people perspective, uh, this is a very important survey. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the American Community Survey. Is it necessary? How long is your morning commute? Should a store sell cosmetics, tractors, or sporting goods? Where's the best place to put a hospital or a school? The Census Bureau's annual American Community Survey offers answers to questions like these, questions that help decide how to allocate money and services. But the future of the survey is uncertain, and losing it would be detrimental, State Senior Fellow William Fry. It's a much smaller sample than the long form of the census. It's only about 2% of the households in the United States. But it's big enough uh, to be able to give us a really good picture of information, that whole range of things, social, economic, demographic, uh, and, and uh, 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 the most important part of it is that you get this information down to local areas because it is a reasonably big sample for states, for metropolitan areas, for cities, and the fact that it's taken every year means that if you pool a few years together, you could even get that information down for neighborhoods. Bill, essentially, the American Community Survey provides us not with a snapshot of what's going on with the country, but an ever-evolving picture. Is that right? The big advantage of this American Community Survey is that we get this information not every 10 years, we get it every year, which is really important in this country, which is changing so dynamically uh, and dramatically because of the, the new populations that are coming here, the way people move around the country uh, and, and all of that. It's really very important. And uh, you know, I think that people use it, think that this is, this is a great federal government good for everyone. And I use it myself. I'm a demographer and, you know, I love this stuff. I just swim in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and every year when the new numbers come out, I want to see how things change. I want to see how immigration changes in the United States. I want to know how income changes for different groups. I want to understand how poverty differs between people that live in different parts of the country in different neighborhoods. All of that stuff is there. Both the private and public sectors use the information garnered in this survey to make decisions that amount in the billions, tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. Tell me how that works. Hundreds of billions of dollars in terms of Medicaid, other kinds of programs that go to social kinds of concerns, economic, housing, infrastructure, all of this uh, uses this information so that intelligently dollars can be devoted to these kinds of efforts. Uh, if you had, you know, before we had the American Community Survey, we only got this information every 10 years in the decennial census. Now we don't have it in the decennial census anymore. If we don't have it in the American Community Survey either, we won't have it from anywhere. Uh, it would just be folly to be able to, to invest these kinds of uh, resources, whether they're government resources or big private sector resources, which rely on these same data, without this kind of information. There are some federal lawmakers who want to do away with the survey altogether. It would really be ironic and, 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 and downright stupid for us not to have a big survey like this. Given the complexity of our economy, the, the complexity of our society, the kinds of issues we're going to be facing in terms of older people's needs, younger people's needs, uh, different race and ethnic groups that are becoming larger in this country. This is not just so that the government can have programs for these people, but also private sector folks knowing where to locate stores, where to locate uh, businesses, uh, nonprofit organizations who provide all kinds of assistance to these community groups. They would just be in the dark in a country this important and this, this rich and, and this, this complicated uh, without this kind of information. I just think it's a bizarre suggestion to do away with this survey. And one of their criticisms of this survey is the cost of it. Is the information that's garnered from the survey worth the cost of gathering it? I think most people realize that it's, it's a really small investment for a lot of information. It's less than one hundredth of a percent of the annual federal budget. It's really small. I mean, there's a lot of things that could be done away with, and, and that's, that's, for all of the information that comes out of this, 
it's really important. It's been estimated here in a Brookings study uh, written by Andrew Reamer, a very important study a few years ago, that $400 billion of federal assistance that goes to states and local areas is directed because of and made better in terms of its allocation because of the information from this American Community Survey. So for a small investment of $240 million, you're directing information for $400 billion across different, different things. So from that sort of estimate and if those kinds of numbers, that, that I think counters the idea that this is not a very good investment. And then the other argument from those who want to do away with the survey is that it's an invasion of privacy, is it? The same rules apply to this survey as the decennial census, which is that Census Bureau employees are not allowed uh, to exchange this information with anyone in any other agency, uh, reveal any of this information. There are very stiff federal penalties, uh, up to five years uh, in jail, if uh, people willfully go out and use this information. As far as I know, there's no ever, no instance of anybody ever doing this. So, so particular government agencies, even in law enforcement, are not allowed to go into the Census Bureau and pull this information out for individuals. It's much safer than information you give to a lot of private sector uh, credit card companies and so forth. So, uh, you know, the privacy issue, I think, is a little bit of a red herring. This is one of the safest means of uh, giving your information to anyone that we have in this country. Bill, arguably the information that's, that's garnered from this survey is really, really important. But is this the best way to get that information? I think most uh, sophisticated people in the survey research world think the best way to elicit this information is from a direct questionnaire. It's what we've always done in the United States with the census and with other kinds of surveys. And so if the real goal is to get this information so we can make a better society for ourselves uh, to help the economy run more smoothly, having this kind of survey I think is really the way to go. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts. All from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.